David Katzenbogen hails from Hibbing, Minnesota, the same town as Bob Dylan, Roger Maris, Kevin McHale, and another G.I. Joe, Tripwire. David would eventually come to be known by the G.I. Joe codename Bazooka, a weapon named after, of all things, a jazz instrument. Let's talk about him. Before we do though, let me say thank you for watching the channel, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the content we upload just like this each and every week. Let's jump into this video. David grew up in Hibbing, went to high school and college, played football, and eventually joined the United States Army. In fact, he was stationed near the Rhine River in Germany with the U.S. Army's 3rd Armored Division. As he patrolled there in an M1 Abrams tank, facing off in the Cold War against the armored tank battalions and T-62s of the Warsaw Pact, David began to think that his tank was too vulnerable to rocket fire. The M1, M1A1, and M1A2 are powerful pieces of armored cavalry, but they do have weak points. He realized, as his file card says, any illiterate farmer armed with a $200 disposable rocket launcher could take out a million dollar tank with less than two weeks of training. And it's because of this that David put in for a transfer. And so he went back to the United States to Fort Benning and to Fort Knox where he learned advanced infantry fighting and became proficient in anti-armor weapon systems at armor school. According to Impel, he also likes to sleep with his missile launcher, but not like that, that would be weird. Bazooka then joined up with the G.I. Joe team in 1986's G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, issue number 44. In the issue, he came flying out from the side of a panel, riding shotgun in an Ostriker, flanked by an MBT Mauler and the Silver Mirage, whose toy box art he would also be featured on. He's one of the recruits being trained by Lady J in this issue, and while she's putting him along with heavy metal air titan crankcase through their paces, they're attacked by cobra bats carrying backpacks full of these mold spores that sprout vines. They were sent there by Dr. Mindbender, who was also being tested out, but by Destro and the Baroness. This bazooka is different than his animated self. He's sharp, speaks full sentences, and knows how to look for equipment right away after they awoke from the sleeping gas that was released from the vine spores. They had no ammo, but Bazooka ripped the cannon off the top of the Ostriker and threw it at a pursuing bat as if it were a javelin. It was a pretty good shot, although he did say he was aiming for the radiator. They ended up winning, and Lady J said that they all passed, welcoming them to the G.I. Joe team. Bazooka was on the whale when the team rescued the fake ripcord from Cobra Island. So he was naturally at the pit when Fake Ripcord turned into Zartan. Again, shotgun and the Ostriker as they spread out around Fort Wadsworth to seal off the base to capture their absconder. He was then on the strike team led by Hawk in the invasion of Springfield, the operation to get the real Ripcord back from Cobra. His team had to secure the airport and then take the main HQ building. Roadblock decided to get the team together at base in issue 63 for one of Bazooka's favorite things, football. They'd been stuck around for a while on the ground, but it wasn't the brightest thing they'd ever done because, of course, Cobra was watching, figured out it was the base. Then, at the end of issue 64, he was eating chips and pounding Yojo Colas at a barracks party. And while two-fisting party treats, he was challenging people to arm wrestling and punch-for-punch -punch contests. In issue 64, for some reason, his mustache is blue. Maybe it's from the chemicals and all those Yojo coals, I don't know. Because he wasn't one of the Joes that took part in Cobra's Civil War, he was not arrested. So he showed up again in issue 78 as part of the rescue team to pull Hawk and General Hollingsworth out of the infirmary that they were being held captive in, in Virginia. He was on the main security team for that rescue operation and his mustache here was no longer blue. But one of the agents opened up in the hallway, firing his weapon inside the hospital, and Bazooka was grazed in the arm with a bullet. In issue 90, Bazooka was at the Presidio in San Francisco. Breaker had hit an alarm because this guy came in looking like General Hollingsworth, didn't know people's code names, figured out it was Zartan, and sounded off the silent alarm. So Bazooka, along with Roadblock, Dusty, and Footloose, responded to that alarm. When Robert Graves was captured by terrorists in Sierra Gorda on live television, which happened in issue 193, everyone on base rallied for the rescue operation. Stalker-led Bravo team, which consisted of Bazooka, Leatherhead, Beachhead, Lowlight, Lifeline, with Lift Ticket and Slipstream, inserting them via Tomahawk, along with their mortar guy named Downtown. A few issues later, they were fired upon, with a massive volley of fire raining down on them from the tree line, and they were pinned down in the lumberyard. It was an ambush, and they were overwhelmed, so in issue 196, Bazooka and the team were strung up on hooks in one of the sawmill buildings. Bazooka was the one to point out how organized this team was, too organized to be ragtag rebels, so, you know, gotta be Cobra. Wild Bill took out a deuce and a half to go find this Bravo team, but the team had already escaped into the jungle, off-panel. In 199, we see that Bazooka was shot and the team was carrying him on a stretcher, and he told them that they should have left him at the sawmill, and everyone said, no way, no man left behind, you're not going, we're not leaving you there. Bazooka, the armor guy, told them that the bats, which are revealed as what those organized rebels are, have a weak point under their chin. 
Bazooka took up his weapon against Lifeline's orders and helping them at the risk of knocking out his stitches. He wasn't going to be not in the fight, but outnumbered, outgunned, and with one of them injured, the situation was bleak for them. But picking targets carefully, good teamwork, and one Malaysian Tiger Gate later, the team made it out. With the help, of course, from their friends Gung Ho, Shockwave, Duke, and one well-launched grenade. He was benched for a while to heal and recover, but he was mission ready by issue 209. So he joined Dusty, Outback, Covergirl, Sean Collins, his throwdown, and Clutch on a recon mission in Ollie's stand. They had intel that Revanche had a big facility in the middle of the desert, and they needed to find out what it was for. Jumpmaster gave them the go after a buddy check, and they hailed into the area. The Humvee they dropped with them landed on the edge of a ravine, so Bazooka and Clutch and Dusty had to drag the pallet from the cliff edge. The team spotted a shadow track vehicle loaded up with red shadows, blue ninjas, and sand vipers, an interesting combo. So Bazooka said to Covergirl basically to go out there and, you know, look sexy and distract him, and she did. And while they were distracted, Bazooka and the team ran up behind the shadow track with shovels and he with a giant wrench to knock them out and steal their uniforms. But Covergirl, Clutch, and Bazooka actually stayed back while the rest pressed forward. They were to provide cover when the team was ready to exfil from the site. When the base went on alert, they mounted up and rolled in for support, Bazooka saying, if there's no team left, there's no team to help exfil. And Bazooka was riding atop Covergirl's Wolverine. And Bazooka finally made it under the cover of an issue with issue 212. But now in this issue, he was in the Hummer, not on the Wolverine. And they escorted the Shadow Track back outside the perimeter. Bazooka and his team looked on as a giant Megazord Voltron looking mech rose up from the desert floor and really just stood there, which as Bazooka noted, was good for them. Not sure how they planned to take it down. But the Joe's robot showed up, decapitated the Revanche mech, and RTB'd. Bazooka stood by as Dusty got word that Snake Eyes perished. And then, of course, he attended the ceremony to honor Snake Eyes who had just fallen in the battle during the previous mission. He was taking a nap on the pack of issue 225 while everyone else fought in this giant battle that wrapped around the front and back cover of that issue. And he finally woke up and showed up in the final issue we got before Larry Hama got his quote-unquote pencils down request from IDW due to the pandemic, which is issue 270. Bazooka is in that last panel. Sean Collins had been captured by Cobra and Laura 343, and the Joes were about to go get him when they got an order to stand down. And in response, they all wanted to go, quote-unquote, on personal leave to circumvent the order. And Bazooka, of course, was one of these soldiers. And so that's how we leave him, very obviously a part of the ongoing and upcoming tale of G.I. Joe, a real American hero. During the period where G.I. Joe was decommissioned in the pages of Devil's Due Comics, Bazooka took up work as a security guard, but he had let himself go. His fighting shape took a dive and he rapidly gained weight, but he was able to link up with some old friends to get back in fighting shape enough so that in issue 16, he fought and beat Big Boa. And in one particular issue of G.I. Joe, not the main line, it was by IDW though, Bazooka was shot and killed. His team hung his jersey on the wall as a tribute to their fallen friend. Bazooka also showed up in Action Force in 87, Oh, and he was on the cover of this choose-your-own-adventure-style book called Operation Robot Assassin, firing a rocket while skiing and also somehow not being burned by the backblast of the rocket. It was painted by this fine art artist named Carl Kassler, who did the others in the series. Bazooka's V1 figure was released in 1985. Hasbro's figure designer Ron Rudat says that he gave David the number 14 jersey of the New England Patriots quarterback named Steve Grogan. He's from Minnesota, but Hasbro's offices are in Rhode Island, so the Pats would be the home team. Plus, you know, he's an American Patriot. The file card here lists the 3rd Armored Division as the 3rd Horde, but these pesky copy editors keep making mistakes. This was another one. It should be the 3rd Herd. His file card also calls him a decisive fast thinker, which is definitely not how he was depicted on the animated series. He was in the commercial for the Silver Mirage along with Footloose and Flint in 85. This version would later be available through Hasbro Direct mail and offers like Operation Blackout, where Bazooka was with the fridge when they spotted a line of bunkers guarding an arsenal of Cobra weapons. That was the story for that. In the end of Slaughter mail-away ad, he was with the fridge again, this time both called All-Star Football Legends, and they're searching for Sergeant Slaughter here. And there he is on the recon sled. He was also, he was part of the bugle insert that also found its way into the My Little Pony toys, another line by Hasbro. In this one, he's in charge of G.I. Joe's South Seas Island Garrison. In Mission Rescue Code Blue, Bazooka led a team with a squadron of sharks to rescue Hawk, who was being held in maze by Serpentor. His name was part of a code which would help you locate Hawk on the map schematic of the maze facility, which was a part of the ad card. In 88, Bazooka got a repaint as he joined the Tiger Force team. And in 93, Bazooka joined Battle Corps and ultimately some kind of fishing tournament based on what he's wearing. In 2004, for the Valor vs. Venom line, Sergeant Bazooka was released with the six-wheeled armored vehicle called Quick Strike, but he also came, same figure, in a two-pack with Torch from the Dreadnoughts. 
He also made it onto the box art for multiple vehicles. I mentioned the Silver Mirage, but also the Tiger Rat, Air Defense Battle Station, and as I mentioned earlier, the Low Crawl Vehicle, the LCV Recon Sled. Then he was part of the 25th Anniversary line in 2008, still called Sergeant Bazooka. Sergeant Katzenbogen was released by G.I. Joe Collectors Club as Tiger Sting Driver, part of Tiger Force in 2015. That same year, he got a blue urban camo color paint and joined Sneak Attack set along with Dusty and Firefly. Oh, and we can't forget the Creon Bazooka and his frozen fudgy bar, which is a callback to the animated side. And speaking of which, Bazooka was part of the Pyramid of Darkness miniseries in 85. Voiced by John Hostetter, he was shown as being the brightest tool in the tree or the sharpest bulb in the shed or however that goes. I'll just say he was uh, depicted as a few fries short of a Happy Meal. Much different than action figure and comic book Bazooka. But he was a good pairing with his witty friend Alpine. Like in Pyramid of Darkness, they rescued Quick Kick, who was stranded after filming a frozen fudgy bar commercial, which is why it was with the Creo figure. So Bazooka was just yelling, Fudgies! Fudgies! when they climbed under the his tank and took cover, and it looked like Bazooka decided to take a ride on the drive shaft, of all things. But despite his seeming ability to speak intelligently and complete sentences, Bazooka did have a few appearances on both seasons, and even made it into the title of Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent. The timing of his action figure aligned perfectly with the debut of this show. He was in the whale a few times as well as driving Ostrikers and the Mirage in the opening sequence for the second season. In the most dangerous thing in the world, he was in his element in a tank battle. And in Arise Serpento Arise, he was one of the Joes who went to Transylvania to guard the temple of Lad Tepish, the 15th century Romanian ruler who would come to be the root of the legend of Dracula. He was also one of the Joes guarding Serpentor for a brief amount of time in the G.I. Joe the movie. And in G.I. Joe Resolute, Bazooka was murdered by Storm Shadow. But despite that, Bazooka continues to be a very much a part of the ongoing G.I. Joe legacy, especially in the comics. But for now, that's all the story we have today. And that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.